Well, 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 it really was just one of those days where it seems like the Vikings, maybe they didn't want to have the road trip. Maybe they just want to enjoy the holidays because the Vikings put a, a stamp on this one and they completely mailed it in and they had a chance to secure the division. Yes, you were down Derrissaw and Harrison Smith and, and Garrett Bradbury, but no excuses. And the Vikings wasted one of the legendary performances from Justin Jefferson as well as Kirk Cousins and Ed Donato on the defense just gave it away, gave it away, gave it away. Now it was exceedingly frustrating, uh, but still 10 and three still just here. Still just chilling. Still 99% chance to win the division. Uh, I mean, the only way that the Lions can win it is if they win out and the Vikings lose out, which probably not going to happen. But the Vikings have a lot of soul searching to do right now because even if they win the division and get a home playoff game, it's going to be tough. It's it's going to be tough, and uh, 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 we already have a bunch of Lions fans in the comments like, oh, oh, take back uh, all, you, all your disrespect. I respect the hell out of the Lions. I've been saying for uh, months now that I love Dan Campbell. I love what Brad Holmes has built. The Lions have had a lot of really high draft picks, and I thought that they've hit on uh, a certain number of them, and they got a very good football team that's going to be a pain in the ass for many years to come. If that's trash talk, I don't know what is. Oh, but you call them low energy. Hey, hey, bro, have you seen this uh, that, that team for like the last 30 years? ridiculous ridiculous but uh kirk absolute mood and uh, this was the high point this was the high point dalvin just shaking uh deshaun elliott out of his jock that, that landed in windsor or dearborn but whatever but we still got the winners and losers from the game winner number one man of the match justin freaking jefferson where his dominance really just is like oh, we almost take it for granted we, we do hit excellence personified he bounced back from his career low 14 yards receiving week three against the lions uh, 11 catches for 223 regular season franchise record for the vikings in terms of receiving yards in a single game uh, anthony carter had 227 in the playoffs against the niners back in the day and, and we, we're running out of ways to describe justin jefferson but at a certain point i mean Je jefferson is all he does is win 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 no matter what and at a certain point, does he get frustrated with what's going on with that defense? Where obviously this team isn't about finger pointing, but I mean, Jefferson and Cousins like single handedly dragged this team along and kept it in the game, but the defense couldn't get a stop. It's like, oh, but they're one of six in the red zone against the Jets. Congratulations. Uh, the Lions were two of two in the red zone this time around. Also, uh, a couple long bombs for touchdowns. That, that's fantastic. But I mean, got to keep them happy. And. Just, it's just ridiculous. Uh, winner number two, Kirk Cousins, uh, 31 of 41, 425, two touchdowns, a 124.5 quarterback rating. This, frankly, was one of the best games I've ever seen Kirk Cousins play. He was under duress. He had three sacks on him, a number of pressures, but stood tall in the pocket and kept finding Jefferson, kept finding Hawkinson, kept finding Thielen and KJ, and was just dealing. Absolutely. Like, if any, if anyone blames Kirk Cousins for this loss, they're either stupid or a liar or both. It's pretty obvious. Winner number three, TJ Hawkinson. Yes, had that big third down drop. It is what it is. But uh, against his former team, six catches for 77 yards on uh, eight targets. He truly has uh, embraced his role, and Kirk Cousins clearly trusts him. Uh, winner number four, Adam Jerome, Ezekiel Thielen. Getting off the schneid, seven catches for 61 yards and a touchdown. Uh, touchdown came on a fourth and four conversion. Also had a really big third down conversion in there as well. Uh, Diesel Dalvin Tomlinson. I mean, Glad that he's back. He's wrecking fools, nine tackles, had some run stuffs, had, had a couple of pressures, and really one of the only guys that was uh, getting it done up front. Uh, C.J. Ham, so a high point of the catch earlier in the game. Cool. Uh, Daniel Hunter uh, doing a good job setting the edge against the run. But, I mean, where's the sacks? Where's the production? And, and the Vikings, uh, how did the Vikings have one sack in the last two games? Like, how do you not have a pass rush with Daniil and Zadarius Smith? Which makes me think it's much more about scheme and coaching as opposed to talent. Because, I mean, they have the talent in spades. And then Ryan Wright, speaking of talent, 53-yard uh, average on three punts, long as 64, best punter in the NFL. And the Vikings, unfortunately, have been using him a little bit too much. And then uh, winner number nine, K.J. Osborne, five catches for 38 and a touchdown uh, on five targets. He's always efficient with uh, the work that he does get, found the end zone. Uh, two of his three touchdowns this season are against the Lions. So there you go, losers. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, 
public enemy number one right now for Vikings fans is obviously defensive coordinator at Donatel, where you have no pass rush, you have soft coverage, you have no creativity, you're dropping Zadarius Smith into, into coverage, and you're starting to see Kevin O'Connell's getting frustrated uh, on the sidelines. Where that offense is putting up points, but the defense can't stop anyone, they can't get a pass rush, they can't get a turnover, they can't do anything. And yeah, not having Harrison Smith sucked, but even if 22 was out there, I mean, they're still not stopping anyone. Right? And uh, five straight games of 400 plus yards of offense, inexcusable. Uh, number two, soft coverage. I mean, so the lines were seven to 15 on third down. They couldn't even stop Penny Sewell, by the way. Uh, four, uh, 464 yards of uh, offense allowed to Jared Goof and the Lions, who were, who were dealing. And number three, secondary miscommunications. I mean, that's what has been the hallmark. That's why Jamison Williams was wide open. Cam Beasy, uh, and I believe it was Patrick Peterson had a miscommunication on that. But it's just really been a mess where there, there's so much talent on that back end. And you can't tell me by three quarters of the way through the season, they can't communicate back there. That comes down to coaching. It really does, and potentially simplifying things. Uh, Dancer, so it's a fortunate Dancer gave up that 48-yard touchdown to Chark in cover three. Uh, the pass rush, where the hell has it been? One sack in two games. Jared Goff, I, I would say that he was maybe pressured three times. Maybe. Maybe. Not a great day for Josh Metellus. So, filling in for Harrison Smith. Now, Metellus played extremely good against Detroit Week 3. Not so much uh, this time around. Uh, but picked on, gave up that third and 12, and was just really targeted all day. Sean Don Sullivan uh, hit on Goof, gave them a free first down on third down, extended a drive, which resulted in a touchdown. Uh, the refs. So, Blowing that Jefferson touchdown dead where it was clear that he did not step out of bounds, but blowing it dead, not really reviewable because once it's dead, it's dead. You can't recreate the play. It's like, oh, well, he probably wouldn't have caught him. Uh, but the Vikings ultimately scored on that drive. That was the KJ one. But uh, having an extra minute on the clock, if they would have accurately just called that, hey, Jefferson tipped out the sideline and he scored, uh, that would have been the difference between taking an onside kick with 250 left or trying to play defense with four minutes left. Maybe the results would have been the same, but the referees robbed the Vikings of that option. Also, missing the obvious face mask early on. Of course, Kirk Cousins doesn't get any calls. And then Jefferson, the whole third down thing, is like, oh, uh, he caught the ball, passed the first down marker, but since he was coming back and touched down, it's just ticky-tacky things like that that always seem to cut against the Vikings. And, yeah, the Lions were being flagged for a number of penalties, but they were accurate. So stupid. Hawkinson, that third third down drop. Special teams uh, caught napping. Um, so they ran the fake punt. Picked up a huge first down after the Vikings defense actually got a stop. Uh, also, they gave up a 35-yard return. So just not a good day for uh, punt return special teams. Uh, Kenny Alberts and Jonathan Vilma just all, do, all day. Just like, oh, the Lions, if they weren't 5-7, and they would be the best team in the league. Blah, blah, blah. The Dalvin fumble where... You know, part of it was Kevin O'Connell getting too fancy, which was number 15. But also, if the jump pass worked, obviously it worked out great. But Dalvin, I mean, the off this also goes into the offensive line. How do you have 22 yards rushing for a game? How do you have five yards in the rushing in the first half? Where he scored a touchdown, by the way. And Dalvin, I mean, I, I like Dalvin a lot. And he sort of turned back the clock a couple weeks ago. He was looking really good in the middle of the season. I don't think he'll be back. You know, given his salary, given his cap number next year, given the way that the Vikings can't get out of his contract, I, I don't see it. Uh, but also playing into that, you know, Kevin O'Connell getting a little bit too fancy. Uh, going, uh, it's first and goal from the three. Don't take chances in that spot. Just punch it in. And uh, obviously, like we said, if it worked out, it's like, oh, look, look at the creativity of Kevin O'Connell. But coming away with zero points, first and goal from the three, just backbreaking, just absolutely demoralizing. And then the whole going for two things. So when you're down 14, you score a touchdown, the analytics support going for two because then you could go ahead uh, if you score a touchdown on the next drive and kick an extra point. Or if you miss it, you can just go for two again. And the chances of um, getting a two-point conversion one time out of two is greater than 50%. So in a vacuum, the math says that d that does make sense. But in, in, in practice and actuality, I don't think it does because that really was a momentum killer or at least pick a better two-point conversion play rather than just a bubble screen to uh, Thielen. Just, I don't know. It, it, it was just a comedy of errors. Kevin O'Connell's making errors. 
the the defense was lethargic. Uh, Ed Donato uh, didn't adjust abs- in absolutely anything. The offensive line was garbaggio, but of course, with no Darisaw and Bra- no Bradbury, that would happen. And you know, the defense without Harrison Smith, they j- they had miscommunications in the back end. They just didn't have that juice. Now, I know a lot of people are going to jump off the bandwagon and say that, oh, the Vikings are frauds and this, that, or the other thing. I'm not ready to do that, uh, but the Vikings are still 99% chance to win the division. Like I said, the Vikings have to lose out. The Lions have to win out. Uh, but given the Lions' schedule the last four games, they may win out, but uh, it's very unlikely that the Vikings are going to lose out. But uh, if they want to make some noise in the playoffs, I mean, they got to bring it. Like something has to be done on defense. It is a disservice. It is disrespectful that Ed Donatel is still allowed to be a defense coordinator. Uh, and, and Kevin O'Connell, he said in his post game presser, is like, we have to make some changes on defense. Uh, it, uh, in as many words. So we'll, we'll see if he, if he actually does it. I don't know. But the Vikings have four games left. Colts game is a winnable game. The Giants game is very winnable. At Packers, at Bears, uh, both very winnable. So the Vikings can still make some hay here. Uh, One seed is sort of bye-bye, but uh, securing that number two seed is going to be paramount for the Vikings. So keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. And and we have seen where the defense has been opportunistic, getting turnovers, getting sacks. So you can win with that defense. The offense, uh, frankly, is starting to click. So we, we do love seeing that. But this is just a really tough game where the Vikings, even though they had injuries, the Lions had injuries too. Uh, one team wanted to play and one team didn't. And the Vikings now, short week, quick turnaround, back of practice on Tuesday, uh, getting ready to host the Colts on Saturday. But your thoughts are thoughts. The Vikings allegedly lose a 34-23 to the, well, not so low energy Detroit Lions anymore. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull. Production value.